everybody, and welcome to the Clearing the Bases podcast featuring Coach Jimmy, Phil, and Jerry. I'm David Friedman, and I want to thank you for coming along this journey with us. How are we doing tonight, Coach? Looking good, Dave. We're just about winding it down. I have one more tournament next weekend, and then I think, and I don't want to say this too definitely, but I think I get a week off. Oh, all right. Special days, special days. <laughs> all right. Yeah. It's uh, the fall season is such a short compressed uh, series of practices, games and whatnot. I know because it doesn't seem like that long ago, we were talking about you just get up and running with it. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I love the fall because we get to practice more than we play. So to me, the season actually is, instead of ending right now, to me, the season, the season began in September. Right. Right. So now you're talking about for primarily for your travel team at the uh, Cadets Academy, right? Yes. And, and the high school also, although it's in the fall, it's just varsity. So what happens is the JV coaches come up and we help the varsity coaches during the fall. OK, and that's what I was going to ask. It really, I guess, for for both is is this this is more of a kind of evaluation of where you're at or the spring or are you like is is a situation where basically everybody that you're working with now is going to be on your teams in the spring or is there going to be a separate tryout yeah on the travel team yes this is my travel team for next spring and summer the high school team this is actually the tryout for next spring gotcha gotcha all right, great. So uh, very happy to announce for this week, we have another special guest. We've been on a roll with our guests lately. I think all the shows have been really, really strong. And again, our listening ship just keeps getting higher and higher on the Clearing the Basis podcast. And this week we have as our special guest, a gentleman named Matt Cole. Now he is the uh, founder and the chief moderator of the Youth Baseball Coaching Support Drills and Philosophy it's a Facebook page, and that's where you can find them, Youth Baseball Coaching, and then it's Support Drills and Philosophy. So if you search for that, you'll find them. Uh, welcome, Matt. How are we doing tonight? Doing good. Thank, uh, thank God for having me. And How are you? We're doing great. We're doing great. So I uh, just want to talk a little bit, um, just starting off with the Facebook page itself, because I know you're involved in a bunch of other things, but let's just kind of run through this right now. Sure. So... The Facebook page has about 6,700 members, so it's a good, definitely a good size. And I see you're the main uh, moderator of it. Are you doing basically all of that? Yes, I'm doing it all. Yeah. Wow, that sounds like a that sounds like a task because I see your list it, of your list of rules. And I, yep, yeah, I see your list of rules. And uh, I'm hoping you don't have to do too much in terms of. Uh, I don't know, playing uh, playing the adult in the room, but you you tell me. Uh, I've gotten pretty lucky so far. When I hit 5,000, I was worried things were going to go haywire because it's social media. Um, it, to be honest, the biggest thing that I've run into is people trying to just constantly sell stuff. And I, okay. I don't want to be that. So we kind of created a marketing Monday for people to do that. I actually just had someone fuss at me in my messages because I declined to post and I'm trying to sell things. So, But besides that, no, nah, the no politics rule. Everybody's kept that away from it. And it's been pretty good focused on just baseball. So, uh, so far I am pleased. So what, one of the things that uh, drew me into Matt's Facebook page was the fact that um, it seemed that the goal of the page was to try and help people in youth baseball, whether it be coaches, players, parents. And one of the things that I really appreciated Matt was you were one of the first groups that allowed me to post um, announcements about the podcast on it. So I wanted to thank you for that because I think I get a lot of your listeners that awesome. um, or, or your subscribers or whatever that, that listen to the show, but I thought it was a great concept. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how, you know, you came up with the idea to do it. Well, I was in a couple other uh, Facebook groups that are online that I'm sure y'all are one also. And I just kept running into things that just felt yucky to me, you know, uh, kids being posted, 10 second clip and a bunch of people hop on there to, to rip them and tell them what he's doing wrong. And 
Uh, there was one group, I'm not in it anymore, but every post was what size glove should I get my kid or what size bat should I get? And just, I, I didn't feel like there was a lot of good coming out of it. I guess if what you're looking for is baseball gloves and bats, it was good. But I just wanted to put something out there that it was easy to for people to get to um, where they could bounce ideas off of one another. Um, as I've said in the past, uh, other people, I don't always agree with everything that someone posts there, but we're not all going to agree. We all have different outlooks on the approach to coaching and all that. So I love when people post things that I don't necessarily agree with. And then there's a dialogue, a conversation about it. And sometimes people figure out that their ideas aren't that great or maybe that they are hitting down the right place and just give sound advice on, on being development focused. Uh, so many of the other groups, I see just people talk about wins, 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 wins. And uh, I just think, especially on the youth level, 12, 13 and under, if development's not your main focus, you're kind of blowing it. And that's why I just wanted to create a place online where that was the message because uh, I just was not seeing it a whole lot. So it, it's basically the same reason why Dave and I started this podcast was for the almost the identical reason, right, Dave? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you figure just like you said there, and, and it's funny because I wonder if I was part of one that, I wonder if we're talking about the same page because I, I had been part of something and it got to the point where almost everything I saw was people just trying to get advice on like what equipment to buy and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was just like, this is just not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert in what size bat you should, your kid should get, you know? Um, go to no. Google. Yeah. You know, that's like, you know, go, go to an actual sporting goods store. There are some around still, you know, um, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah. So it, in, in, in our early days, uh, Jimmy and I, you know, it's, again, it's nice having this, type of conversation because our last group of them have really been about the older set. Uh, we've had the high school coach on and Steve Springer, obviously a major league scout and whatnot. So uh, we've been on a, a different role as far as that goes. So it's nice to kind of get back to our roots and getting into the real development in youth baseball. Right. Well, I'm glad I can be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, we are too. So leading into like what you were just saying, Dave, about having you know, Springer, Pla, and Chaffin on here, guys that, you know, are at the top of their coaching games. Um, and I thought it was good to have them on so that we could see what guys at higher levels are looking for in players. And right. then I thought that it was a really good idea to bring you on to see what you're seeing at the Little League level, like you said, 12, 13, and down, to see what we can talk about to maybe – make a little bit of a change in, in that age group so that we could get them on the right track to where the, you know, the, the higher levels want their players to be. Right. Right. Yep. Well, I'm the coach and coordinator for the league that I'm at. I've, I've, this would be my second season as the coach and coordinator with them, but you know, that's our main focus. I always say, you know, right now I'm, I have majors, so I have 10 to 12 and my whole objective is to get them on the middle school team. I, I hope they say, all right, we got somebody that we can work with here. And it's a good, good chance that this kid's been brought up and developed the right way. And it, it, it's hard to focus on development, even at the youth level and literally because, you know, it, it's hard to convince uh, parents and even other coaches that our main objective at this point is to get kids playing in as many positions as they can, definitely practicing in all the positions. But it's really hard to convince people to stay focused to that development. It's just it's win, 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 win. And, you know, I've, I've seen teams go undefeated, but individuals didn't get any better. And I've seen teams go 500 or lose no or, or win no games. And you can see where individuals on the team got a lot better. So that's the, you know, the big focus to get us going where we need to be is, is somehow – Wave, waving the magic wand and making everybody stay focused on development at these young levels, uh, uh, development and fun. And if you want to keep them coming back, they got to get better and they got to be having fun. Cause I'll tell you what's not fun is not being able to catch a ball and being on a ball field. What's not fun is being able to field a ball while you're on a ball field. So I think fun and development, believe it or not, go, go hand in hand at this young level. 
Oh, I, I would agree 100% with you on that, because if you're not making it fun, you're not going to keep their interest. You know, it's it's you figure on, uh, especially in a little league, I'm going to go ahead and just make an educated guess on a basic team. You probably have, I don't know if you, I don't know how many teams you even have in your league, but let's say from, a, you know, a, a 11 and 12 year old league, if you've got four teams, you've probably got three kids who are real good. You got three mm-hmm. or four kids that are OK you know, good to okay. And then you've got a couple of kids that are, that are real weak and it, whether it's, I I still, and this, again, this is a a callback to one of our earliest shows uh, where Jimmy and I talked about this type of thing, where I I, I think it's primarily ego from the coach's standpoint of, you know, winning, got to win, got to win. Well, how do, how do we win? So we can either spend a lot of time trying to strengthen our weaknesses or we can strengthen our strengths. And I really feel that most youth coaches, their focus is on strengthening their strengths. And if they can get right. if they can get that one good pitcher that they have to go five innings instead of four innings, mm-hmm. well, you know, we can get through the, the last inning. But, you know, that I think that's kind of the, the philosophy. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 definitely an ego thing, I think. And, you know, not totally saying that as a as a bad thing. I mean, we all like to compete and. Even when I, you know, we lose and I did the right thing and develop people, I still feel crummy after a loss. I mean, we don't we don't want to lose, um, but we can't we can't just throw development to the to the wayside and then, you know, pitch a kid off five innings all the time. I mean, I, I have two kids on my team now that they're just lights out for me. Uh, they're just down the middle all the time. And sometimes I have the my, my assistant coaches kind of look at me like, when I throw somebody else out there um, just because it's it's hard to take the risk for people and you know it's not just coaches it's parents I mean parents you know if, if you lose a few games you can get an email you know yeah. and they want to know why is Jimmy a shortstop when my baby should be a shortstop he's a good one you know and, and trying to explain uh, to parents that the focus is development but you know a lot of that comes down to the team level at the very beginning of it, when you send out your team letter, let parents know then, hey, I'm here to develop these kids. And that may mean we give up some runs. We may take an L. Um, but establishing that out front really helps with the awkward messages later. You don't get quite as many, I've, I've noticed, over the few seasons. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. And also, to Dave's point about strengthening your weaknesses, if you don't give the kid a chance – then he's never going to develop. And I'll, I'll use an example. Um, this past summer, I had a pitcher who threw the ball decently, but struggled with control. Mm-hmm. So we were playing a game. I put him out there, whatever, for the last half of the game. And I forget how many batters he walked. And we didn't win the game. But it didn't matter to me that whether or not. The idea was to get him the experience. And I even said to him and his parents after the game, I said, listen, I said, he had a bad outing. I said, we all know that. I said, but I'm not stopping. It's not stopping me from running him out there. I'm going to keep running him out there and running him out there. And by the end of the season, he was, he was one of the guys that I could count on to get on the mound because we worked through it. That what, that's what has to take place. Most parents don't understand that. Right. They want that. It's, it's like like Springer said, they want to put everybody in a microwave. They don't want to put them in an oven. They want instant gratification instead of taking the steps that you need to take to get that person where they need to be. Right. And it, it is a long road with a lot of, you know, know, these kids are are physically and mentally developing. Um, And, you know, you'll feel like you're on a roll and then suddenly you have that week and you're like, Oh, we're going backwards here, you know, and that's because you're dealing with kids and it's a, it's a roller coaster of, progress but you know I just explained to one of my my, my assistant coaches and we were talking and we're in fall ball and development 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 is key right now and I was explaining to them you know it's not that we're heroes or nothing let's be selfish about it right so the way I see it is the kids who didn't come into the infield a whole ton of you know a whole lot last spring they're in the infield a lot right now and it's because I want to make sure as a coach I have depth come next spring you know because a lot of these kids I'll have on my spring team so, you know, last spring I had one of those pitchers I was telling you all about. He went down with hamstring, just a freak. He took off the run down first baseline and his leg popped away. And during that five weeks that he wasn't with us, I mean, I was constantly – it was like a, a Rubik's Cube trying to put the lineup together where I was going to play people 
because we didn't have that depth. And, you know, I've been talking to them about, well, let's be selfish. Let's take care of ourselves here. Make sure we bring everybody up. So come spring ball, if someone goes on vacation or someone gets hurt or someone's sick or got a birthday party or whatever else it is, man, they don't come. We're not screwed. You know? Right. Yeah, you're you're you got to realize, especially when we're talking about well, any of these teams other than travel ball, which can uh, span almost a whole year. But uh, whether it be a school team or a town team, those seasons are so short that if right. you yeah, if you if somebody does have, you know, God forbid somebody breaks a wrist or something, but even at something like a hamstring or or, uh, um, you know, some kind of a pulled muscle or a little bit of a sh- of a sore shoulder or elbow, if they got a rest for two weeks. Yeah, you know, that's that's a quarter or a third of the season. A lot, a lot of times. Right. I mean, that's, yeah, that's four, four or five games right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So no, so that's that's great. I know that was something that I had started to do, um, and it was it was to talk about a little bit of selfishness. It was also it was to make sure I wasn't getting those calls and emails from the parents, and it was also so I could enjoy and really coach during the games with these kids is I would just set up a grid on paper. I would have the, you know, we were playing six inning games. So one through six, I'd have all the positions going down and I'd have the names filled in. And basically I made sure nobody ever, we had free, um, I don't know how you guys run it in your league, but we had free substitution in our league. We didn't have to worry about the whole, this guy's going in for this guy and whatnot. That's, right. you know, cause they're, they're little kids. They, they should yeah. be able to go in and out. Right? We just want out. Yeah, good, good, because that's the way that's really the way it should be. And I just made sure no kid ever sat more than one inning in a row, because, yeah. again, how, how do you keep their interest? You know, a 10 year old that's sitting on the bench, I don't care how disciplined they are, they're, they're not going to keep their interest if they're just sitting right. on the bench. You know, but if they know they're about to go back in and if they do start screwing around, then maybe they won't go back in. Then, you know, there's the carrot for them to yeah. go. Right. So right. I, that's the way I used to set it up. And it just it worked great. Except for when, you know, kid just didn't show up or, you know, something like that. But I would that's set the whole, you whole game that. up that way. Yeah, that that's exactly how I lay mine out. I get a little straight edge and I make me a little piece of paper with it all on there. And I go down six innings, who's sitting, who's going where. And one of the rules we have for fall ball is actually no one sits twice until everybody set once. Awesome. Um, and I like that just because. It kind of teaches the hot shots sit on the bench because, you know, again, development, once you get to middle school, you're probably going to sit on the bench a little bit. Once you get to high school, you're probably going to sit on the bench a little bit. And you better learn it now uh, so you're not up there at the high school team throwing a fit because, you know, you've been a big deal your whole life. Um, but it also gives uh, the kids who maybe get set a lot during the spring season, it gives them that opportunity not to get bored and, and to be able to play more and to be more of a tit for tat with the top of the tier. So Matt, you are the coaching coordinator for the Bethlehem Little League. One of my biggest concerns with youth baseball is how do we handle the coaches? How do we train them? What are we doing? What 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 age does your league start at? Five, six? Uh, so we start at four. Four. Wow. Our T ball is four to six. Then we have coach pitch seven to nine, then 10 to 12, uh, seven to nine. And then there's an eight to nine that's a minors. And then 10 to 12 is majors. And then we have a junior where we got 13 to 16. Okay. So being the coaching coordinator, what are you doing for your coaches to, I guess, to educate them so that they're able to develop your players? Well, the first thing I did was I reached out to high school coaches. So there are three high schools that Air League feeds into. Um, as soon as I got elected, I reached out to those um, coaches. And one coach got back immediately with me, and he's been great this whole time. He's eager to help. Um, so last spring, we did a coach's clinic where the high school coach ran it, and he brought his assistant coach, and they talked about everything from drills to philosophy, you know, kind of the little league versus travel ball. You know, they, they broke down how there's something special about community of little league and, and being from the neighborhood and playing your, you know, for your school team and your name being on the wall in the hallway. Um, so they touched on all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then at the beginning of each uh, season, I sent out a specific letter to each division 
Um, and I stole it from uh, Ripken's Way, uh, uh, coaching youth baseball, the Ripken Way. He has a checklist at each age. You should be able to do this, you know, so at four to six year old, you need to be working on this. So when we get to the next level. So at the beginning of the season, I send that out um, in a letter of our culture and what we want Bethlehem to be. Uh, so we send that out. And in that, I say, this is what we need to be hitting on in your division, but also give resources. So, you know, I'll give them podcasts to listen to, uh, pointing them in the direction of USA Baseball. They have a mobile app. Uh, we just did our coaches meeting for fall ball. I told everybody download this app, use it. So we give them means of, of resources to look at that I found to be helpful and pretty solid on what they're talking about with development wise. Um, so we do coaches clinics. We've been trying to hold a lot of players clinics involving the high school coach. You know, we've had a bunch of his uh, kids, his players come out and help us with things. And then we sign off on their volunteer hours for their credits. So it's a two-way street. I reached out to a couple of professionals in the area that run some of the travel ball uh, teams, and we were lucky enough to have them come out and run some defense skills clinics with us, and he was great. So um, education, you know, just, just pushing education. And, you know, we're a smaller league here. Uh, we have, for fall ball this year, we have 14 teams. Uh, there was another league I was with a few years back that is – humongous it's absurd how big they are I mean this year for their minors in fall ball they have 16 teams just in minors wow. and they, they literally have hundreds of teams and I went to a coach's clinic through that organization one time and me and the president and then five other people were there so this coach's meeting that we just had with us only having 14 teams we had exactly seven people show up you know I think in reference to that much bigger league, I'm in a pretty good spot to where we have people here who care to learn. Um, a lot of people show up. And, of course, I keep my line open to all the coaches. Um, just yesterday, I, I did my two teams, and then I had to run back to another complex to help with the T-ball team. Um, you know, so I keep my line open for any questions, anybody getting bogged down, getting stressed out, or need help with drills or anything like that. So. Just education uh, from people a lot smarter than me. That's why I contact the high school coach. Um, and just keeping my line open to where coaches are comfortable. I mean, a lot of people don't want to coach because it's scary. You know, they're, they're, they're not sure about managing a team. They're not sure, sure. about how much they know. Um, so when I get somebody in here, I want to make sure we kind of pamper them to get them going. Um, and then they're comfortable to be here. And then hopefully we can retain them through the next several years. Um, but education is the key from smarter people than me. I think we all look at it that way. I know that that's exactly the way I look at it is I am. And again, Dave, you and I have discussed this many times. I feel like I don't know enough and I'm constantly studying. Yeah. I, I, I always say with baseball and life in general, I'm just smart enough to know I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm smart enough to know that I don't know anything like that. <laughs> well, I, you know, you're, you're smart enough to know that you can still learn new things. You know, I mean, that's, that's, go. that's the way that I would look at it. And again, it's a, it's a common theme that we talk about on the show all the time is again, kind of putting that ego aside and saying, okay, what I'm doing is working, but that doesn't mean it's the best way that I could do it or what I'm doing is not working. So I'm not going to just put my blinders on and just beat my head against the wall. Um, and obviously the things that we worked on when the kids were six and seven are not the same things that we're going to be working on when they're 10 and 10 to 12. And then again, when you get into the high school ball range. So I, I think it's, I think that's fantastic. I think the lack of support for coaches is one of the bigger problems. Again, Jimmy and I have talked about that at ad nauseum here. What we talk about is coaching the coaches and the uh, I, I think you it, overwhelming majority, unfortunately, fall into one or two groups. The one group, like you said, they feel like they don't know enough to even jump their scares to, to do it. And then you got the other group that, you know, maybe they played ball, maybe they did play in high school, college, whatever. And they just think that they know it already. And again, I'm just just going to put the blinders on and do it my way. And then, yeah. you know, overwhelmingly, I think a lot of the better players don't 
a lot of times make the best coaches, uh, whether it's because because they had such natural ability that they didn't have to always put the extra work in. Uh, you know, things came so easy to them. They could just drill it a couple of times and they had it type of thing, whatever the, you know, you know, combination of A and B there, what have you. But I think having that type of support, I mean, you're talking about your program being small to have 14, 14 teams. You said you have this, this fall. That sounds, that sounds good. Cause I know that's bigger I haven't been involved in our town league in, I don't know, five or six years now, but that's much bigger than I think we were the last time that I was involved in fall ball. Yeah, we, uh, well, we actually have record numbers, record numbers this fall. Um, so we're actually in a weird little thing where we're climbing a little bit, you know, uh, Jimmy emailed me uh, before this, and we we're talking about how little league numbers are jumping while baseball numbers are going up. We're actually in like a weird place where we're, our numbers are getting better. We had a higher spring than usual. This fall, we're, we're, we actually beat our last spring uh, numbers. So we're wow. hoping we can relay wow. that over. Um, you know, but a lot of that has to do not just with the coaching, but this past couple of years, we have a new president here. And actually me and him played here when we were kids. That's how we ended up back here. So he has a, awesome. a, a big love for this league. And, you know, we, we do a lot of things involved with the community also. And I think that's helped us with kind of building our numbers. People are hearing more about us. You know, we do food drives, toy drives at Christmas. We're holding Halloween events open to the public, not just to our membership. So, you know, I think if you can find a way to get your league more involved with the community, just on fun stuff, not baseball stuff. You know, we're doing trunk or treat and then we're going to do a movie on our senior field and let everybody hang out and maybe do the Adams family or something. I'm not sure yet, but, you know, just bring the community here. And then before you know it, people want to sign their kids up just because they've had fun. there. Um, so it doesn't always necessarily go back to the coaching is a big part of it, but, you know, we really engage in a lot of different areas and just trying to get better with the coaching culture. Um, I mean, D Dave and I both believe that, the, one of the great things about Little League is that sense of community and being in your community and, you know, being together as a community and neighbors being together and all of that. That's all part of it. Because, again, like like you said, Matt, the numbers that I sent you, they show that very few kids are going to go on even to play high school ball. There's only so many roster spots on, on the high school team and everybody can't play. So the Little League has to be fun it has to be community oriented it's just a way to do it yeah you know during our coaches meeting for the for the stall ball season I, I kind of brought that up um not kind of it was part of my little type out you know I wasn't quite as scientific as you were with your numbers I feel like just a bogus 99.9 percent .9 aren't going to make it to the pros um <laughs> you know, I, I talked about the reality of it is I mean, what, if I coach 20 years, I might have lucky to have maybe one kid that goes pro, like actually goes pro much, you know. So, you know, I talk about it's big to make sure that while coaching, we're teaching these kids. Most of them are not going to grow up to be pros, but they will be a husband. They will be an employee. They will be a boss. They will be a teacher. Hopefully we do a good enough job and they come back and they'll be a coach. Um, right. Those yeah. are the more definite things. Um so if we can teach them lessons with that also, you know, and, and parents appreciate that, you know, last, last spring, we had a situation with team other leagues coming here. A lot of people just throwing their trash on the ground and, oh. uh, you know, it drives me crazy. I'm a, I'm a, a it uh, should drive you crazy. It drives me crazy too. Yeah. It, it just people throwing stuff on the ground just blows my mind. So I actually cut one of my practices in half. We did some BP, worked on some pitching and some catching, and then I gave all the boys gloves and trash bags, and I sent them around our whole entire park, pick up trash. Um, yeah. Nobody was talking about baseball. They were, you know, talking about whatever. They broke up into groups. Uh, Top-tier kids with the lower-tier kids were all working together, um, and it was just – it was one, I was tired of seeing it, uh, but it teaches the kids the lesson of if you want something nice, you got to take care of it. And a few right. games later, we're coming out the dugout, and one of my players looks over at Air Bench, and he sees a bottle sitting up on the bush. He says, oh, come on, Air guys. And he walks over there, and he goes, cleans it up. And I'm like, ah, that's it. That's why we were doing that. 
Yeah, um, see, we 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 do the we do the same thing, and I'll tell you, it, this just happened over the summer. Where the, the way I do it is, uh, when the game is over, I assign two players to make sure that everybody cleans the dugout and that the dugout is cleaner than when we got there. So yeah. they they did what they had to do. They got it all cleaned up, and I went back and I checked the dugout. And I, I saw a couple of bottles still in there, Gatorade bottles or whatever they were. And I said, hey, guys, I said, you missed these. I said, oh, coach, those weren't ours. They were here before we got here. I said, I don't give a crap where they came from. I said, get in there and get them out. And leave you know, it better so than again, you found it. What's that? Leave it better than you found it. Exactly. Right. Plus, yeah. if you're going to do a job, do it completely. Don't do it halfway. Exactly. exactly. You know? So. Yeah, again, uh, all lessons that can carry over back and forth between baseball and quote unquote real life, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, that's that's fantastic. So what's just to, to switch topics a little bit? What's your personal level of involvement in terms of you have your own kids in the program at this point, or are you just volunteering? Where no, I do have my son. He's on my team. Um, he's actually had a journey with baseball. He started late. He didn't start playing until he was nine. No, eight. He didn't start playing until he was eight. Uh, now he's 11, and he actually – he played at that bigger league I was telling you all about. He just – he wasn't into it. And I remember he was catching one time, and he threw somebody out. For the very first time, he threw somebody out at third, and he came off. I was like, man, you feel that? Because I was a catcher. I was like, you feel that? And he was like, no. Nah. And I was like, <laughs> cool. exactly. Hey, Dave. I made that same exact face. I said, <laughs> yeah. I said all right. Uh, I said, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and make an executive call here, and you're not going to play ball next spring. I was like, go play some basketball, do something else, take a break. And uh, when that happened, I came back to the league that I played at, and uh, and and one game we were short players. And I looked at him, I said, hey, man, you, you know, you mind coming out and just helping us out today? Well, he got in the dugout. He fell in love with the boys. He had a good game, um, and now he is back in it. He's bugging me to play travel ball now, um, and uh, he loves it. But I was going to be just a volunteer coach until my son got back into it. So I got the waivers to get him moved over here with me. Um, so, yes, my son is on the team, but I will be involved with this past him playing. You know, me and my other coach was just talking. We only got about another four years of this uh and my heart kind of broke when he said that i was like oh you're right um so we only have a you know another four years but um you know it, not to be cheesy but the saying coaching is a calling you know the 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 service service before self uh giving back to the community uh helping youth stay off the streets keep them out of trouble get them in a good position where they can make the school team so they got to keep their grades up you know all that stuff plays a part in why I do this too. It's not just the X's and O's and the drills of baseball. You know, it's a, I don't know, I guess kind of a mushy moral thing a little bit. So even once my son's done, I will still be here. It'll, it'll, I'll, I'll be part of this for until they kick me out. I was going to say that you're going to, you're going to wind up like me. My son stopped <laughs> playing seven years ago and I'm, yeah. I'm still going, but, but again, to your point, it's, I feel yeah, it's somewhat of a calling. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. It's it's just a tremendous amount of work. And for little, almost no pay. It's yeah. very little. Um, and it's in your case, you. I was going to say, in your case, it's all volunteer. I mean, and Dave can tell you that, you know, I coach a travel team. I coach a high school team. I train players. I do the podcast. I write for Inside Pitch Magazine. You, you know, you either have to be a lunatic or, like you said, it has to be a calling. To, to be able to do, you know, all of that stuff. And maybe it's a little both. <laughs> that's for right. sure. <laughs> absolutely. I can tell you in Jimmy's case, absolutely. I, I'll let you figure out, figure out which one is the stronger part of that. But, uh, oh, well, you already know which one yeah, is. Yeah, I know. But they, uh, yeah, I mean, that's where I can tell you from my experience. So my, my youngest just went to college uh, for the first time. So I, he had stopped playing after his 13 year old year. Uh, he was a late bloomer. So um, when he went up to the big field, all of a sudden he was one of the smallest kids and he was a catcher and could not, you know, not even close to making that throw and whatnot. And he just, yeah, unfortunately he got real, real discouraged. And then, uh, you know, now four years after that, he was 
six one and 180 pounds so uh just like if if he could have just kept, held on to it for you know one <laughs> or two more years but um so but point being is that so yeah i had stopped i had stopped coaching when he was done because he got involved in other things my older son i was so it became tough where i would have had to the way my situation was i would have had to sacrifice still doing things with them in order to uh continue coaching Mm-hmm. other other people's kids and I, I just wasn't able to do it this spring I just got back into it and uh it was kind of like from maybe not the first day the first day was a little awkward but from the second day on I, I just you know I, I I got that juice flowing again and and yeah. really uh you know it was it was great I, I I loved it and it was you know on the bus on the way home from our last game uh, this was for a school team. Uh, the coach was talking to me about stuff we're going to do next year. And I'm like, oh, okay, I, I, I guess I'm in. So here, yeah. you know, so here we go. So it, it's, it, and it is one of the things that, I don't know, it's, it's one of the things I found when I was real, real involved with the local league. I was one of the directors of the league. I handled the equipment and major purchases, uh, uniforms, all that stuff for our league. And it was, uh, you know, very thankless job as coaching is quite often. And it was one of the frustrations that that I had, and Jimmy, I know will uh, will echo this because we actually worked in the same league or worked volunteered in the same league. Uh, you know, the, the complaints from people that aren't doing anything, and you know, the the lack of support and the lack of uh, involvement from the community sometimes uh, that, that, that can be tough to deal with. So, I mean, it sounds like you guys are doing a great job with the outreach things you're doing as far as doing, you know, the Halloween things and the toy drive and all that stuff. So um, have you been, you've only been in this position, you said two years, but are, are you seeing an, an increase in, in the volunteerism and increase in the participation with the things um, you're doing? We're, we're getting to that point, you know, so, if we had the same number of teams we had a couple of years ago, we would we would have been set. But kind of with the extra that we're growing, there's more kids coming in, you know. And, and to your point, the people fussing who aren't doing anything, you know, we love saying it takes a village until the village is called on, and then you hear crickets. Um, <laughs> nice. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that I have coaches knocking my door down, wanting to come help, but. Um, uh, I, I'm getting lucky and there's parents stepping in just to help and we're doing our best right now to make them feel comfortable. You know, it is, man, I mean, just getting volunteers is like pulling teeth. I mean, yeah. it's not just coaches, get someone to keep the book for you, get someone to run the scoreboard for you. I mean, you're, you're just over there, please, you know? Yeah. Um, so no, it's not easy getting volunteers, but we're lucky and we have good volunteers here. I wish we could get more because right now, you know, I have uh, two teams that I'm coaching, I'm managing one, kind of uh, managing slash co- uh, 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 assistant coaching another, and then I'm running around helping with other teams. So I would much rather us get more people in here. But, you know, we have a lot of new parents this fall season. So hopefully we can break some of them up in the spring and they can take their own teams. Yeah. Um, because we put them with good coaches that will show them, hey, this isn't the big, scary thing that you think it is when you're sitting on the bleachers. Um, so, no, uh, we don't – we're not swimming in volunteers, but the ones we have are pretty damn good. And, and, and we really try to work with what we have. And so far that's worked, you know. But something with getting volunteers and something I've been talking with my president about, you know, talking about ego – a little bit, you know, I'm thinking a good way to, to help with getting volunteers uh, is on social media or your membership uh, email, you know, taking time to thank the volunteers. You know, I, I don't think that's such a horrible thing. I mean, back when we were hunter gatherers, we want to be noticed for what we do in our tribe, right? We want to be sure. noted for the good work that we do. And, and if you do bad, guess what? You get noticed for that too. You know, that's a very <laughs> human thing. Um, and I, I, I think one good way of helping draw other people in would be doing some kind of spotlight for the volunteers you do have, you know, because when other people who have not yet volunteered see that they they look at it as, oh, they, they're really appreciative and maybe I'll get a spotlight, you know, right. if I'm going to help too. So, you know, it, it, it's a 
take time to recognize the people that are putting in the work because so so many leagues, people are busting their butts, but there really is no kind of recognition. And unless it's a calling for you or you're a lunatic, at some point you're going to get burnt out. You're going to get burnt out on the four nights on the ball field, the night you're not on the ball field, you're scribbling stuff down. Yeah. You, 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 you're still working with it. Um, if you don't get some kind of recognition from that, at some point you're going to get burned out and not want to do it anymore. But um, it, it, sound, it sounds like from what you were saying that you also provide the support to the coaches so it makes yeah. it easier for them to volunteer. Because my yeah. experience my experience with, with the league that Dave and I used to um, you know, work with there was no support for the coaches. There was yeah. just, here's your team, here's your equipment, see you later. Yeah. Um, well, and and that's why me coming here, I've been such a kind of, you know, strong on that point of being open because at the bigger league I was at, it was exactly that. And I didn't even get the equipment. It was in the right. score box for the catcher. And they were like, go get him, Tiger. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Um, so, so we're trying to do that, give that support to them and let them know that you're not a pest. If you text me, all my coaches, somewhere in an email, have my number. They can text me, they can call me, they can email me. And hopefully that'll catch on. It's only been a few seasons now, a fall, a spring and a fall now. But hopefully that'll catch on and we will become, we'll get the reputation of a league that cares about their coaches because that's something that I push a lot because I've been in a situation where you didn't feel appreciated. You didn't have support and that makes you not want to volunteer. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, definitely. Cause, cause you're going to get just on the, the thing you talked about, about giving them the, the rec- positive recognition, cause you know, you're going to get the negative. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's no, you know, there's, there's no way that you're not going to, whether it be officially from the league or just the ones and twos from, uh, from the, the, the parents who, again, most of them not, spending the time not right. investing uh themselves into it the way that we do as the as the coaches and and then again to take it to the next level to be the coordinator or we used to call them the directors of the leagues and whatnot uh for right. our league so you know you're going to get the negative and it can't if, if that's all you're getting you, ultimately you're just going to go what am i doing right what, what am i doing and why am i doing it right yeah right you know right. i i, I kind of feel i'm in like a unicorn rainbows and unicorn kind of uh, a place here because, you know, I, I always hear about, you know, the, the, the angry emails and all this stuff, you know, ever since I came into coaching, the whole reason I volunteered to coach the very first time was because I watched my kid show up uh, to practice and there's 10 kids standing in line waiting for a ground ball. They're throwing grass at one another. There is no plan. There is no skills work. Uh, there is no, you know, dude, I'm, I'm hooking my kids up to parachutes. I got them running out there. You know what I mean? There's, there's, there's no, there's no working on being healthy and strong. Uh, I didn't see any real effort at teaching all the kids. This kind of thing. The two really good kids get catered and the kid at the bottom is, you know, whatever, no hope. And I can tell you, that's a lot, you know, I, I, I've oh, yeah. taken, you know, uh, you know, they're not going to go pro, but they hit almost every game now. They make a play on defense almost every game now. Um, so, you know, it, it, it. that's one of the reasons that I first started coaching was because I, I saw that uh, not happening, the, 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 the attention of those things. And so as soon as I came in, I, I, I got my composition book. I have one for every season, every team. I have a composition book. Uh, I write practice plans down, down to the minute. The water breaks scheduled out. So I've come in trying enough that I have never really had an overwhelming hate mail from parents. I've been very fortunate and and had mostly parents that have been very appreciative of the effort I put in. You know, I've I've had a couple of the uh, stereotypical travel dads standing on the fence, kind of mad at me because I'm not pitching their kid. But Mm -hmm. they never come to me or be disrespectful. I just kind of see the side eye, you know. Um, but I've been very fortunate. I, I haven't got a lot of hate mail. See, well, I, I don't know how much of that is is fortunate versus you're putting so much effort in. So your your effort isn't to avoid those emails, but your effort 
is is making it harder for somebody to send one of those emails as i guess you know you're not doing it just so you don't get the emails obviously it sounds like you, you care an awful lot about your kids and wanting to see them develop like we talk about but uh but the the end result the dominoes fall with that is that you know the parents have less to complain about so that's that's fantastic so um i'm i'm it's it's one of the things i go through uh jimmy again i go through it uh, at work in my quote unquote regular life all the time on the baseball field is people not um not recognizing themselves sometimes i think is part of uh part of the the issue you know so much negativity out there um you got to recognize yourself and the efforts that you're doing and the success that you're having and it's it's not dumb luck and it's not just it's not just you know, oh, this is just my year type of thing. No, yeah. you're, you're putting in the effort, you're getting work, you're seeing the results. And that's both on the field and with the parents. I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. And that's one, of, that's one of the reasons why I, I believe so much that, especially at the youth level, little league travel ball, that coaches need to be trained. They need to be educated because, and Dave, you've heard me say this before, the more you know what you're doing and the parents are seeing that, hey, this guy is making it fun. He's not neglecting any of the kids. He's giving the same attention to all of the kids. He's teaching them, the, you know, the, the fundamentals, whatever they need to be taught. The parents will, for the most part, because I know Dave yelled at me last time when I said the parents will leave you alone. They won't leave you alone. But for the most part, they will, because you're doing the right thing. You're doing the job the way it was meant to be done. And another thing that I've always said is that just because you're a volunteer, you're still volunteering to do a job. So if you volunteered to, I don't know, I'm trying to think like, oh, like a, like a community thing that we used to do with, with the little league here or the Cal Ripken league was, didn't they have like a community day where they went around and cleaned up on the highways, you know, in the trash. Yeah, before the, before the season would start, we would take a Saturday morning for like three, four hours and we would gather at a central location, kind of what, uh, what Matt was talking about that he did just, you know, um, right. at the field. But this was outside of just the baseball field. This was the in the community going to a different park and going to uh, even the uh, park and ride station off of the uh, off of the highway there. Um, it was right. all, I shouldn't say there was all kinds of stuff we did like that. That was the main thing i think that we did well my point my point in mentioning that was whether you're volunteering to do that to help the community or you're volunteering to coach to help the community if you volunteered to again go around and clean up the roads and and the parking rides and stuff like that do you just show up and not pick up any trash and just say well i volunteered i'm here right. i volunteered right. no you volunteered to do a job right so even yeah. if you're a volunteer coach Still, you know, if 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 somebody is not teaching you, if the league is not teaching you, then I feel that it's your responsibility to learn as much as you can to make sure that the kids are getting something out of what you're trying to do. Right. And, and I agree with that 100 percent. I was just speaking with some people out here about, you know, obviously with volunteers, not everything, not you can always say someone's not pulling their weight. And, you know, and he's and like, well, how do you address that? Because as soon as you say, hey, you're not doing good enough, well, they leave, you know, but my right. mindset is say something because exactly what you said. Yes, I volunteered, but I signed the paper. I said I was going to do it. So now I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And, uh, you know, if life gets so hectic for me that I can't do it to the best of my ability, well, I'm not going to fill out the volunteer for it. You know, so uh, I agree 100 percent just because it's volunteer. That, that's not a window to jump out of, of hey i showed up i did my right. part you gotta do more than just show up right and the more support that the league can give the volunteer the the easier it's going to be for people to want to volunteer and say hey you know i don't know much about baseball but i know that matt cole is going to give me a practice plan he's going to give me basic instruction on how to do rudimentary things with baseball so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go blind i'm volunteering and i'm going to have support and i'm going to be able to help the boys in some way right. and that's and, important. And, and that and that has been my biggest thing because of the nightmare that i went through when i first started coaching i just i don't want other coaches on my clock when i'm the coaching coordinator feeling like that feeling like oh man i signed up to be hung out to drop right. um you right. know it, it's it's it, the effort given by volunteers, I think, should be respected and, and, and honored. And, you know, gratitude is the attitude. And, and 
even if you have a bad day or you don't know that much about baseball, thank you for coming out here. Anything you, you, yeah. you and me, you call me, it's not a bug, you know, and, and leagues really have to get better on, on, on treating our volunteers like the heroes they are, you know, it, it's not, cause none of this happens. You know, right. There is no, you know, there is no youth sports without volunteers. You know, we can talk about travel ball and all that stuff, but it all starts at a volunteer level, whether sure. that's Cal Ripken or Little League or at the YMCA, it, you know, so many kids start their love for sports by a dad that volunteers. And without volunteers, I can't see a, a landscape of youth sports without volunteers. So, you know, show that appreciation and make sure that you're taking care of them when you step up. Sure. And now, now I'm going to throw a curveball at you with that because okay. you, you do have the volunteers mm-hmm. that will – appreciate the support, need the support, want the support, and it's there, okay? So someone who's a little timid will appreciate that, okay, I'm going to go volunteer because I know I'm going to get the help. And Dave, you'll probably agree with me on this. What do you do with the guy that comes and volunteers and doesn't want your help and says, I don't need your help because I already know that. But meanwhile, he's got that big ego and he's not teaching the way you want, but yet he's volunteering. Now what do you do? That's that double-edged sword of, 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 you know, if you raise too much fuss, you won't have a coach for a team. Um, and, you know, there's all kinds of kinds, you know, and, and, and there's some people who, who believe that they know it all already um, and there's nothing to learn. You know, I, I haven't figured out the magic trick to make sure someone who doesn't want to learn decide to start learning. Um, yeah. All I can do in my position is, you know, I can't change people. So the people who have that desire to learn, I have to cater to that. You know, I I can't, I can't shake my finger at you because you're not doing it the way that I want it done. And you you didn't show up to my coaches meeting. Hey, thanks for being out here. Thanks for having them on on the field and, and, and doing your part. Not everybody's going to do it the way that I want to, but, you know, tend to the garden that you can touch. Is an old saying. I can't remember who says it, but tend to the garden that you can touch. So if I have 14 coaches here and seven show up, I'm going to feed them as much as I can to get them prepared. And I'm going to put the league in a position to where these guys that have been learning, you can't justify giving the manager position to one of these other guys. You know, if you're thinking about the long game, I guess maybe that's one way to uh, look at it. I have not figured out how to sway people's opinions of how it's supposed to be done. I just I feed and, and give the energy to the people who want it. And I think if you can do that over a few year time span, then you can change the culture of that. It's, it's not a, it's not a light switch. Right. Right. Yeah. No, that, that's gotta be one of the toughest parts of it because obviously you want everybody to put in, it's not the same amount of effort that you're putting in, but at least a, a high level of effort. You want them to join into the program. But then you say, well, all right, so if if you don't come to my coaches meeting, then you can't coach next year and you're already short coaches. And now and now, you know, you're you're kind of cutting off your nose to spite your face type of situation. So, uh, yeah, that, that's that's something we've we've talked about. It's been it's been a while, but uh, we've talked about some stuff with that. One of our first one of our first programs that we did was coaching the coaches. One of I think our second program that we did was on how to fix town ball. Uh, mm-hmm. because of these these types of situations that uh, that we run into. So, um, yeah, I mean, you have to put out you, you put out your framework. And this is one of those things where you kind of you put out your framework, you hope for the best. And then you also make adjustments as things go on. And I don't know if that's that's a thing where you say to the person, say, listen, what what do you what do you need for me? And if the answer is just nothing, uh, that's a, that's a, you know, again, very tough conversation because you're not their boss. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and if you tell them you're not coming back, like you said, now, now you're just out now, sometimes you just need the bodies. Right. And, um, uh, so that becomes, that becomes tough, but maybe it's a situation where you talk about, um, again, asking them for their help in training the other coaches, you know, feed the ego type yeah, of thing, yeah, uh, right, right. you know, because yep, if you can get them, in, if you can get them involved with that at all, um, sometimes maybe you, you can then turn them, turn them, get them on your side, and get them on your team. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's 
it's hard to make anything mandatory when someone's volunteering, you know, and, and I say that, but there's a local Cal Ripken league here too. And, you know, with, with Cal Ripken, um, not Cal Ripken, uh, Babe Ruth, I'm sorry. Um, but with them, they make it mandatory that all coaches go through the USA baseball certificate. So they go through the child abuse thing and yep. you know, they go through it all. Um, and it's kind of a little checklist to make sure, you know, hey, we have some kind of standard here. Um, and they seem to have a lot of coaches. It's just uh, I think a lot of leagues are scared to implicate that because of that aspect of, well, if you don't, you know, if you don't sit through this little course, you can't coach. Well, all right, well, I just will coach it. Um, so it's it's walking well, that up was, thin ice. Man. <clears throat> that was something Dave and I spoke about earlier also was, yeah, and, and that's, a, that's a big question. Do you mandate it? And, you know, I believe that it should be mandated, but then Dave brought up the point that, you know, well, if you mandate it, what you just said, well, then some people are just going to say, well, I'm not going to do it. So you're, you're, you're caught between a rock and a hard place when it should be that way. But some people just are, I don't know, hard headed and they just don't want to do it. Yeah. You know, and, and, and trying to sort the, this conversation out of my head for a couple of years now, you know, and that's why I've just rested on, I'm going to feed the energy to the people who want it. And, and, and I think over a few years time span, you know, if you continue with that and the kid that's eager uh, to show up and learn or the dad that's eager, you know, because we got a couple guys that are here that are young 20s who are coming in just to help. They don't have kids here, you know, so especially those guys, I'm I'm really <laughs> taking care of them. Like, hey, <laughs> y'all, y'all are, you know, because you can't beat that. Um, right. You know, but it's that double-edged sword. So that's why I've kind of settled on not so much fixing the guy that doesn't want to learn or doesn't want to show up to the coaches meeting, but make sure I'm giving as much as I can to right. the person who does, because we can't change, you know, we are who we are for better or worse. Right. And if you don't want to do that, I, I, I don't see how I'm going to twist your arm and make you do it. So if you don't yeah, want to do it, you can't. that's cool. But yeah, these yeah. guys that do, we're, we're, we're going to chop it up. We're going to talk about it. We're going to learn a little bit. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, like you said, you either have to want it. I know, like I'll use myself as an example. I'm always starving for information. I want to yeah. learn as much as I possibly can. And there are other people that, again, like we just said, not to beat a dead horse, but that just think that they know it all and that's it. And I think, Dave, you had said that one time where you never thought that there's a spot in your life where you believe you're full. That's it. I don't need to learn anymore. I think that the, the last topic that uh, I think we should go into, and this is this is always the most controversial one is let's talk Vaccine, about your... vaccines or natural immunity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> Dave, we want the, we want the show to keep growing. We don't want oh, to. Kill okay. Ourselves. I forgot. No, no politics. No politics. Uh, go ahead. I, I, I was just about to say, read the rules, man. Read the rules. No politics. Rule number one. Unfortunately, that's a politics thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, well, it, unfortunately it, right? it is. It shouldn't be, but it is. Yes. <laughs> The thing that I, I, I want to talk about, I know that this is, uh, you know, a big problem in youth sports is how do we handle parents and how do you guys handle parents? And when I say yeah. pa handle parents, I mean parents that are unruly, that are not doing the right thing. Yeah. The biggest thing that has helped me, and this is with the parents and the kids, is being up front, you know, when you get your Perfect. roster, your first email is, hey, my name is Matt, but then I attach a team letter to it. And I put out the expectations, no, no parents in the dugout. Uh, you know, we're trying to get our kids to develop and, and focus on this team. And they don't need you over there bringing them Cheez-Its and Gatorade and everything else. And again, as I just said, I'm in a unique situation to where I haven't run into that unbearable parent on my team yet. You know, so that's kind of a hump in coaching that I haven't gone over yet. Oh, you will. <laughs> you, you will. But I mean, I think one way to help that is explain right out the gate in your team letter what is your culture? What is your philosophy? What decides who sits, who plays, where they play? Uh, what is your practice structure going to look like? So, you know, 
I try to put it all out there up front to where if you are coming back to me in five weeks fussing with me, I can almost call you an idiot and hold up the team letter and say, hey, dude, <laughs> you know what I'm almost. saying? Like, yeah, you know, almost. <laughs> I, I try to cover all my bases in the team letter to where after I'm leaving the ball field at 930 one night, I don't have to hear someone fussing at me. You know, I, I try to nip it in the bud out the gate. But again, I haven't been in that situation to where I've really had to fight off a parent. So, uh, please, my ears are open to whatever y'all do. No, well, I mean, what, what you just said is hits the nail right on the head. All right. Because I know I'm the same way. I'm up front. I'm stern. Uh, my parents know what my what my expectations of them are. We mm-hmm. discuss it in, in um, you know, the, the preseason meeting and everybody knows where they stand now. So I'm kind of in the same situation where I've had very few. But one of the things that I will do is if a parent has a problem, I will talk to everybody. I will have a conversation with them and explain because there's always a reason. I, I don't do things just because I don't like the color of your kid's shoes. There's yeah. a reason why I did whatever you're unhappy about, and I don't have a problem explaining it. And usually it goes to some type of discipline or some type of mental aspect of the game that I'm working on with that player to get my right. point across. But yeah, just as long as, as you, you're you upfront, you let them know what, what the standards are and make sure you stick by them and stick by them for everyone. Yeah, right, right. You know, and, and now that I've had an unruly parent, but just yesterday – there's a kid on my minors team, you know, he's, he's in a situation. His dad passed away about a year ago. He's kind of socially awkward a little bit and sports was a big deal to dad. And so now mom in honor of dad is trying to get him back out there and playing sports. And, and, you know, uh, it's all very new to him. baseball is. Um, and yesterday during the game, I got him on base and, you know, I was kind of, trying to, we, we've been rained out of a lot of our practices. So, you know, I'm kind of showing him how to take his foot towards second base to be ready to run and, you know, watch this and do that. I could just see his brain. He's like, oh, my goodness. So next uh, next time we took the field, I'm putting him out in right field and I'm out there talking to him. And I can see he just looks really worked up. And I asked him, I said, hey, are you overwhelmed? He said, yes. I'm overwhelmed right now. I said, all right. I said, get through this in for a minute. I was like, I'll sit you again, give you time to kind of catch your breath and slow down. Well, his mom came to me after the game and was like, just asking, why did he sit twice almost back to back like that? You know, and again, as you send in your team letter, be honest, be straightforward. But when she asked me, I told her, hey, he's getting overwhelmed. Uh, we want him to love playing baseball, not just be a place of stress. So I kind of dialed him back a little bit to let him kind of catch his breath and hit reset and yada, yada, yada. But, you know, even when they do come to you, like you're saying, Jimmy, be very honest. Be, be very yeah. straightforward. Really uh, honest. Just beat around the bush. Don't mislead them. Because if you sugarcoat something, it can be misunderstood. You're, you're more likely you're more likely to run into it again if you if you do that, and that's yeah you got to you got to protect yourself on those situations also. Right, right. You know, so if you should, you know, if you're going to misunderstand me, at least misunderstand what I actually meant. You know, not the <laughs> right. version I was trying to give you. Right, right. You can no, you we, can disagree with me, but you need to understand why why I did. There's a difference. Exactly, there, definitely. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, that's the same as when you're dealing with your other coaches too. You know, because that's kind of coming up this fall season. We kind of had a little bit of a spat here recently. We took an L, and there was some development going on, you know, and I, I just laid it out in our group, our, our coach group text, and I laid out, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I just want you to understand what my position is and what my approach is and why I'm doing it that way, just to kind of refresh her. But being very, you know, brutally honest up front with the adults, in the game, whether that's coaches, parents, or anything, I, I think is the 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 best path on, on tackling that kind of stuff. Honest, yeah, never goes yeah, out of style. Yeah, definitely let them know where you stand. Um, I had an incident not that long ago. The umpire made a call that the parents didn't like, and right away the parents started barking at the umpire. Well, I turned around, I looked at the parents, I said, "That's enough." I said, "I don't want to hear another sound. I'll take yep. care of it." And then I said, get everybody together after the game. I want to talk to all the parents. 
So whatever, the game was over, got all the parents together, and just, again, just laid it down said, listen, during the game, I don't want anybody talking to any umpires. I don't want my players doing it. I don't want my parents doing it. I'll take care of it. And that's the end of it. And that was the end of the story. It never happened again. So, again, just as long as you lay down the law and they know, I I believe that just as long as the parents know that you're in control and you're in charge and you're Mm -hmm. doing the right thing, obviously, then, again, I don't want to blanket it because Dave yells at me when I blanket this. (laughs) I don't want I, I, I don't want to say that they'll leave you alone, but they will. Not bother you, te- you as much. Yeah, you you, you, inc- you increase the chances of your success greatly uh, by, by doing it that way. Yeah, I knew I could count on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll fix it for you. So yeah, no, and it's it's funny when we talk about this stuff. Um, you know, likewise, I haven't had someday one of these days. I, I want to do a show where we do talk about our our parent experiences. Most of the ones that I've had that were not good were not teams that I was coaching. There were teams that my, my kid was on uh, travel teams. So now you, you're upping the ante, right? You're getting, uh, you're getting more high strong. You're getting more of the, my kid should be the star type of stuff. And I found out very early on, I don't know, uh, my son, my older son started playing travel. I think when he was 11, uh, still played town ball all through as long as he could. And then, uh, but, but started playing travel when he was 11 and I think it was, that was a fall season. And then I think that spring I learned right away, I could not hang out with the other parents. Uh, and it was the rule that I basically made for myself was I was either in the dugout because at the time I was coaching the town teams, uh, mm-hmm. but I wasn't coaching the travel teams. So I was like, I'm either in the dugout or I'm out right field fence by myself, yeah. if, you know, if maybe, you know, one or two other people, if they wanted to come out and because we were on the similar philosophies type of thing, that was perfectly fine by me. Uh, you can always tell yeah. where the coach parents are. They're always out in the outfield fence away from all the other ones. Always. Yeah, yeah it, it was it got to the point where it, it just like I, it two, the twofold one, I didn't want to hear it. And two, I never wanted the coach to think I was part of the peanut gallery, right? You know, I, I, you know, coach, and, and you know, this from coach, you look over at the stands, you don't know necessarily who said what, you just know where it came from. Right. So yeah. um, if there's uh, you know, 12 of us over there, it's all 12. And I was you like, yeah, you keep. yeah, That's yeah, it. man. And, and I was just like, you know what, I'm going to enjoy this a whole hell of a lot more for the next two and a half hours. If I don't, <laughs> if I don't have to be around this. And, uh, and that's, that's what I did. And that was from the time he was, like I said, probably 11 and a half all the way through the end of his high school ball. I, I just, that's just the way that I did it. You know, I've, uh, I've heard the saying, everybody should work in retail. At some <laughs> yeah. point in their life. Uh, I think every sport parent should coach or umpire before yes. they ever open their mouth from the, the side, line, side court or anything else. Do it first. Cause you know, uh, there's one parent I can think of gets pretty hyper, not on my team, but about umpiring and stuff. And I'm like, if you were such a good umpire, you should really volunteer to come out here because then we won't have any bad calls. There you go. They would be perfect. Um, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what can you do with them? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's, uh, it's, that's a tough, it's, it's it's tough because again it's not i mean i guess if something got to the extreme you could ban a parent but you never want to hurt the kid exactly. either in in those cases as well and so you know, that's the weird thing a lot of the times when i've seen those kind of parents they got such good kids right yeah, right. But, yeah, oh, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't want to punish him you know I, i've been by a kid you know um at the ball field and their dad start yelling and like they, you, you see him and he actually said oh man stop you know, like they know, even eleven year old knows yeah. dad's being crazy. You know, and like <laughs> for me, that's just heartbreaking. I I hope my son, times I haven't coached him, never had to sit on the ball field, soccer field, or basketball court and think, "Oh God, Dad, shut up." <laughs> yeah. You know, like I hope I've never done that to him. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I I can tell you, and and uh, he's he's probably going to listen to this, but I got to tell you something. This was one of the funniest things. I have ever seen one of my players do. And this happened over the summer. Uh, kid was on the mound. He's pitching. Um, his dad was former college baseball player. 
And his dad was, you know, saying stuff to the kid while the kid was on the mound. So mm -hmm. I'm sitting in the dugout and I'm just watching. And, and, and the kid on the mound was struggling a little bit. He looks at his dad and he, he mouths the words to his dad, shut up, just like that. And I cleaned up what he, what he mouthed. I just cleaned yeah. it up. <laughs> I had to go into the dugout because I was laughing hysterical. Yeah. And I walked over to the dad and I said to him, I said, did you see what he just said to you? And he's shaking his head. He goes, I know. So I had to take the kid in. I told him, listen, I love the fight. I love the way, you know, you were fighting, but don't ever do that again. I said, that's yeah. your dad, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, the, you know, the dad was barking so much that the kid had enough. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a broken record, but I'll say it a million times. I'll say it a million times more. If the worst part of youth sports is the adults. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. it, it, I, I very rarely had an issue or seen an issue with a kid that I was just like, Oh man, this, this is just horrible. I've seen a lot of that. With kids. Um, but luckily not on my team. So. Well, I can, I can tell you, I've had one kid, one yeah. kid that I can think of in, I don't know, the hundreds of kids that I've coached. One kid that was just, I was just like, I don't know what to do with this kid. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but uh, like you said, for the most part, the kids are, the kids are wonderful. All right. So I think that'll about do it. Matt Cole, he is the curator of the Youth Baseball Coaching Support Drills and Philosophy uh, Facebook page. So you could you could search for that. If you just search for youth baseball coaching, his page will come up. It should be either the first or second thing that comes up. Like I said, if you're just about 6,700 members. So hopefully from uh, from being on here, Matt, we'll get you up to the next level. But we definitely want to thank you for coming on and sharing your experiences and uh, helping out with all of our with all of our listeners. And thank you all for having me. I've, I've watched every episode of the podcast. So y'all keep doing it. It's a, 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 it's fun to be on a podcast that I've been listening to so so y'all keep doing what you're doing you're doing a good job thanks matt we appreciate it again we're, we're we were happy to have you on i thought the conversation was great and um again thank you very much for allowing me to post our uh, episodes on your root page so yeah, um, i want to thank you for that yep keep on posting all right we'll keep them coming thanks matt thank y'all so there you have it our conversation with matt cole I thought it was a pretty good conversation, and I thought Matt had some good ideas and some good viewpoints on how to coach at the Little League level. Everyone that's involved with the Bethlehem Little League in Richmond, Virginia, you're lucky to have a guy like Matt involved in running your league. Once again, I want to thank everyone for listening. Please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the show. You can also find us on Twitter, at the CTB Show. That's at the CTB show on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at clearingthebases at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts on the show. We'd love to hear from you. And I'll leave you with those very important words. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you on the next one.